Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for episode 40 of the Doll Symposium. As always, I'm your host, Shizu-san, and my beautiful assistant today is the very lovely Skaha Skadi. So without further ado, let's just get today's episode started, shall we? Alright guys, so, uh, this is becoming a habit as of late. <laughs> so again, this episode's gonna be on Saturday. I don't know if maybe I should just move the Doll Symposium to just Saturdays now because work has just been really crazy and you know finding time to do it during the week has been a little crazy but i mean i don't know it's half my fault too but we'll see we'll see how things go it's supposed to be fridays but today we're doing it or this for the past three weeks we've been doing it saturdays so that being said uh who knows what the future holds i will try to get this back on track to fridays again but We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll just see. So without further ado, um, let's just get into today's news. So my beautiful little Sakaha Scotty is going to go off to the side in her little corner there while we actually tackle today's episode. So let's change views. As always, we are going to talk about Dolphy Dream News first. So first up is just a bunch of uh, friendly reminders of things that has recently happened because there really isn't much this week in Dolphy Dream other than one really huge announcement. So let's get started with this. The February new outfit collection was already released on February 11, 2023 from the Vogue's international website. I'm only mentioning this even though it passed because there are still some items available here on the Vox International website. So if you do want some of these items, definitely check that out first because Vox USA is having their, their February new outfit collection on February 21st and uh, 24th, sorry. And this is gonna be a first come first serve basis. They actually specified it here, first come first serve basis. So it's not a lottery. It will be a click war for Vox USA as well. So if you didn't manage to win the click war on the international website, there's going to be another click war on the Vox USA website. So we'll, we'll just see, but I would definitely check the international website first because the item you want might still be available there. If not, then come back on the 24th and you'll have your second shot at it. Now, also as a friendly reminder, the reboot for Ren and L L Len and Rin, uh, for the Dolphy dream Vocaloids has already started from February 11th to March 19th. And just so you know, because I didn't mention it last time, but we do have it for Volks USA the same time, February 11th to the 19th. However, I do want to caution you guys, if you pre-order on the Volks International website, it is more than likely you may get your doll first from there. Uh, Vogue's USA is usually a slight bit behind from the international website, um, at least usually. So if you do pre-order from Vogue's USA, uh, you might wait a little bit longer than everybody else to get your dolls. Unless they have changed the way they do things and it's being released simultaneously at the same time. But I don't really know and I can't say for sure. But uh, either or, I mean, it's up to you where you want to pre-order them. It's still available for pre-order, so just visit either or um, if you want to pre-order them. But I do suggest getting it from the Volks International website. No shade, no harm against Volks USA. I love Volks USA. It's just if you wanted your doll sooner, you could get it from Volks International. That's all I'm saying. Um, let's see. Next up. So the Snow Miku thing is out uh, on the Volks International website as well, but there is a difference actually. The Snow Miku pre-order for this outfit started February 2nd and it will be until March 3rd, okay? Delivery won't be until fall 2023, but the reason why I want to make this specification is that if you go to the Volks International website, pre-order started on the 11th, which is seven days later or nine days later, I'm sorry, nine days later, and it will end on March 19th which is actually, what is that, uh, 16 days later from the international website. So for whatever reason, if you, you know, couldn't reserve on time on Volks International website, the Volks USA website is behind by a couple of days. So you may still have a chance to pre-order that. 
but I will mention it again when we get closer to the date on episode 41, uh, just so that you guys, you know, get another heads up on this. But these are all just friendly reminders of things to come. Now, if I'm not mistaken, now we come up to the really big news, right, from Volks, and that is the Little Mermaid. So she is not a vinyl doll, as historically all the uh, Disney princesses have been in resin. Uh, so she is no different. Ariel from The Little Mermaid is going to be available from Vokes International. I haven't seen anything listed for Vokes USA, so really right now it's just released on Vokes International website. Now Ariel is going to look like this. So you do get the tail, but a lot of you are thinking, does she have legs under there? And yes, she does. <laughs> so the tail is pretty much just a dress part. I don't know if they're going to ask you to remove the feet and then put on the tail so that she can, you know, be like a mermaid. Or if you can somehow hide the feet in there with the tail. That I don't know. I'm going to assume that you remove the feet. But here's the thing. You probably don't remove the feet. Or maybe there's some contraption because I'm not an expert in resin. But if you remove the feet, then there's nowhere for the rubber band to catch on to, right? Because the rubber band catches onto the feet and that's kind of how it closes everything in so the doll stays together. So I'm assuming there you either fit the feet in the tail or there's some kind of like um, special contraption that she comes with in, in her kit where you can rubber band at the end of the feet and there's like a pole at the end or something that just holds it from like, you know, the rubber band's going back into her body or something like that. Or maybe a special foot peg that you can use in order to keep her feet, you know, inside. Like, like instead of having actual feet, when you put her legs inside the mermaid tail, it's probably like little tiny pegs at the end. I don't know. I'm really guessing. They didn't mention anything specifically on the website on how that would work. But she definitely does have feet. And you could see here, you know, you have the mermaid tail, the little seashell bra, you got the fork, you have this um, starfish. I don't know what this part is right here. I think that's maybe an underwear set, maybe? And then the wig. Um, so just to give you more of an idea, this is the, uh, um, what's it called? Um, the stats for her. So she does say here, it says the doll body, the wig, the hair ornament, the chest shale, the mermaid tail, shorts with pannier, and comiskey. I don't know what the Kamiski is. Um, if you guys know, let me know in chat down below because I have no idea what Kamiski means. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, she's going to be released for 124,300 yen. This is not uncommon for these Disney princesses as most of them have gone around the $1,000 mark. Um, so do be, you know, careful i guess or, or at least advise that by the time this was released the yen and the dollar uh i don't know if the conversion rate is really going to be in our favor at that point um but that's how much she's going to be around one thousand dollars us roughly give or take the strength of the yen or something like that so uh do be aware of that now also her secondary outfit this is the outfit when she's on land so obviously you can see she has legs, there are her legs, and she comes with this whole dress. So it looks like you have the underwear here, you have the under skirt thing, you have the regular skirt, the bow on the back of her head, a scrunchie, I guess, for the bow, maybe? Her shoes, her corset, and her blouse. Um, so that's all in the secondary outfit for uh, Ariel there. And I, she does look absolutely lovely, but I'm so happy that she's being released because as you guys know, I'm waiting for Belle. And as you guys already know, I'm trying to save money. So the fact that they released Ariel is a huge, huge blessing for me so that I don't have to spend money. Nothing against Ariel. She's absolutely beautiful, but I really like if I'm just going to spend a lot of money on a vine, uh, resin doll, I want it to be Belle. So. I am going to be passing on this one, but she is absolutely gorgeous. Um, as, as all of the Disney princesses, I think look really good in my opinion, except for Cinderella. I think Cinderella is a little bit of a letdown. Like she's good looking and she's cute, but I feel like she could have been better. 
Rapunzel is probably my favorite so far of all the girls that have been released. Like, Rapunzel really looks like Rapunzel. Um, Anna and Elsa look pretty decent. Like, they look pretty good too. And Ariel is like a strong third. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm really waiting for Belle. But yeah, you have Ariel with the mermaid outfit as the original outfit. And then you can buy the secondary outfit for the dress. Now, um, the dress itself is going to cost 13,200 yen, which is roughly around like a hundred bucks, $110. Uh, again, depending on the strength of the yen versus the dollar at the time when you do purchase this. Now, next up. Now, Ariel is going to be released at Doll Party 49 event, which is going to be at Tokyo Big Site on Sunday, April 4th. So that's when she's going to be available. If you do want to get her earlier than most, you could hire a proxy service or you could plan because now that the borders are open, you could plan to go to Japan at this point in time, get your admission fee and take your chances of getting her at the actual Dolpa, which is definitely going to be like a cool experience if you can afford to do something like that. Um, now she'll be available on the online store. Now it says here order period. So I'm assuming that order period means that you can pre-order her, right? So it's kind of like a click war at the event because you're lining up at the event, trying to get her and it'll be a lottery. But afterwards from Monday, April 4th to Sunday, May, 20, uh, May 24th, you can go onto the online store and uh, basically pre-order her. At least that's my assumption of how these things are, are, are going to work because I mean, April 4th to May 24th, I mean, that's that's a pre-order. That sounds like a pre-order to me. Now, you, it, they also have a link here where you can pre-order her on the official Disney shop. Now this is a, this, don't be fooled by this. I saw this on the website. I was like, cool, you can get it from Disney. I clicked on it. It is only available from Walt Disney online stores via Japan website. So this is not your regular Walt Disney international site that you can buy from anywhere. Like if you just go to WaltDisney.com or DisneyShopDisney.com, it's it's not going to work. You have to have the Japanese website uh, version of it. And and even then, I don't think they'll shop ship internationally. So it's probably only going to be for Japanese residents. That's my assumption, at least, because when I clicked on it, on the link, it only takes you to the Japanese Disney web version. So just want to let you know on that. Oops, sorry, I went too far. <laughs> and then next you have the uh, Dolphy online store for May 5th, 2023. Now this one is going to be just for her secondary outfit. So that's going to be for the dress up here. So if you didn't get the dress during Dolpa 49, then the dress is going to be available on the online store only on what well, I shouldn't say only on, but it will be released on May 5th, 2023 on the online store. What that means is it's a click war. And once it's sold out, it's sold out. There's there's no more. So it's not a pre-order period and it could last longer than May 5th. If nobody buys the outfit, it'll be available May 6th and 7th and so forth. But, you know, release day is May 5th. So if you do want Ariel and you're not going to the Doll Party 49 event, then make sure you check out the online store April 4th to May 24th to pre-order. And then on May 5th for the outfit. At least that's the way we're seeing it. And you notice how all these say detail coming soon, detail coming soon. That may be subject to change at some point. But this is the information that we have as of right now. So if you are interested in Ariel, start saving your money if you haven't started already for whatever reason <laughs> for any other doll, um, you know, and just keep mindful of these dates because and check the websites and I will let you know if anything changes on the doll symposium, if any information gets updated. But if you know, you don't want to wait for my news, which only comes once every other week, you know, you could check the website, you know, on a daily or weekly basis or whatever is easier for you just to make sure that you're up to date on what's going on. Now that really wraps up everything for Dolphy Dream news. Like I said, it, there's not really much from Dolphy Dream this week other than the one big announcement as they're still working through all the other stuff that they just recently put up for pre-order. Plus the fact that they're 
getting ready for Doll Party 49. So that you know, that's another thing. Yeah. Now, A Zone International has some news because we just finished Wonderfest, uh, the Winter Wonderfest. So they announced a couple new things, and the things that interested me the most that I thought would be the best to talk about on this channel is a new anime collaboration. And if you're not familiar with this character, this is Kurumi from Data Live. Not really my favorite character from the show. I'm a big Yoshino fan. Uh, but, you know, Kurumi has a big following in Japan. So a lot of people like her over there. And it's no surprise that she gets another release. But no, I shouldn't say another release. That she gets a release from A-Zone. Now, the thing that caught me off guard is that she is on the another realistic character line from A-Zone. Which is the same line that Marin right, from My Dress Up Darling is being released. However, the, dis the difference is Marine has a painted on eyes and face. But for whatever reason, Kurumi has actual eye chips. So what is going on, A-Zone? What, what is with this inconsistency? I don't understand what's going on. Why are some characters with painted face and eyes? And why are some ha actually have eye chips? I don't, I don't get it. What, what is going on? They're both from the same line now. This is another realistic character. Marin's another realistic character. I don't know why Marin's face is painted. That's kind of upsetting. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, and I don't know why the choice of that has been made to go in that direction. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing and disheartening. I'm not trying to take away the thunder from Kurumi if you're a Kurumi fan and you want to buy her. I just don't understand because I really wanted Marin to have like, you know, the sculpted face with the with the eye chips in it but a little disappointed in that but let's not take away from Kurumi Shine it's Kurumi's turn to be announced now she's absolutely lovely um, with her dress and everything I just don't know what's up with her eyes like I know in the show her eyes do turn to different colors but from the pictures it looks almost like it's just plain yellow and plain red with no iris in there I mean, there is, you can see it from this picture. It's too bad we can't get much of a close up that there is an iris, but from this far away view from the camera, it just looks like it's just flat red and yellow, which is really weird. Um, I'm sure in person, because Azone likes to hide little details in the eyes that you couldn't see in my Kano unless you look closely. So maybe there's something about her eyes when you see her on person and it's just when you take pictures on a camera that it kind of comes out like this. It's just unfortunate that it looks like this on camera because it doesn't make her look better uh, in that matter. If anything, it makes her look a little awkward. But again, in person, it may look different. This may just be the way the camera shot it and like the reflection of light happened. Who knows? Now, Kurumi's price is going to be 63,000 yen, but with tax and everything, you're looking at 69,300 yen, which is going to be roughly around like maybe 600 dollars or a little bit above 600 us dollars now she like again i said she's another realistic character look at this google translation three one scale it's supposed to be one third scale so you get the soft vinyl head head prototype um blah 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 with the az02 body g bust so it's a much bigger bust um and it also has like the what is it called? The costume. She comes with the costume, the boots. Like this is a really bad translation. Apparently she has hand parts. Oops, sorry, I went too far. Apparently she has hand parts. Uh, Emperor's moment. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming that's like this little headband thing here. Um, but yeah, the, for whatever reason, the Google Translate didn't do justice this time around. Like it's just really, really weird. Now it does mention here that she has a soft final head with the 24 millimeter eyes. So see, like there's actually a distinction here, whereas Marin did not have that. So I don't know if it's like a Google Translate error or anything like that, but even if it was an error on Mar Marin's page, you can clearly see the pictures in Marin that they were painted on eyes. Either that or they were just really horrible eye chips in her. But I'm pretty sure that they're painted on eyes because you could clearly tell from the picture they're painted on eyes. And the fact that Kurumi here comes with actual eye chips and they're from the same line i don't know man i don't know what to think i don't i'm not sure what's going on with a zone and their choices right now um but 
Kurumi is going to be available for pre-order. The reservation period is February 2nd to April 17th. You can go to all your usual suspects to get her pre-ordered or you can just go to Azonet. Um, so yeah, she's up to April 17th. Release is going to be around August 4th or August 10th. At least that's what this Google Translate kind of looks like. So going to pre-order it from now until the beginning of spring and then she'll come out like towards the end of summer. Now this next one are the are the two girls from Iris uh, I, Happiness Iris Clover, which is the same line as Kano and and um, the one that was just released, which was Reen, I believe. What was her name? Reen or something? Um, trying to remember all the names. But usually you have all the characters that are released on the Iris Happiness Clover. They always have two different versions of the same girl. So this is essentially the same girl. There's just two versions of her. Just like Kano had the winter version and the store direct version. Um, you still have the two different versions here as well of the same character. Now the character's name is Mylene, um, Mellow Chirp. Now this is the Bluebird version, which is the one I want. And then the other one over here, this is the pink version. So this is the pink bird version. This is the Bluebird version. They're going to be the same price going in at 58,000 yen and then including tax 63,800 yen. So roughly at about $600 or just below $600 US, depending on the strength you know, of the yen and, and the US dollar conversion. Now, pre-orders started on, uh, will start, I'm sorry, on February 22nd and will end on March 3rd. So you don't have as long of a time to pre-order them. This is quite normal for the Iris, uh, Iris collection, Iris happiness clover collection thingy. A uh, really long name. Um, this is pretty typical for them for usually their pre-order periods are only like a week long. Um, this is not like an anime collaborated character like Kurumi from before where they usually have a much longer time period. Usually these girls only have a week uh, of a pre uh, for a pre-order period and that period can end early if they pre-ordered their set limit amount. So it could always end early if they pre-ordered um, if everyone pre-ordered them on Monday and there's just none left, basically. So, Mylene uh, has the soft final head with the wig and the uh, eye chips that are in there. These are 18 millimeter eyes, so a little bit smaller on the eyes. Comes on the AZO2 body C bust. So this is a smaller bust than what Kurumi comes with. Um, let's see. I don't know what this is in here that they put only the lower leg uses. <laughs> this is one of those weird Google Translate things. I have no idea what they mean by that. Um, but again, the pre-order period, February 22nd. Um, oh wait, why does it say something different here? See, Google Translate is screwing everything up. See, on this first part here, it says February 22nd to March 3rd, and then delivery on July 22nd. Down here, it says Wednesday, February 22nd to Wednesday, March 22nd. Scheduled for delivery on July 28th. So these are way different days, but this is all from the same product page. Oh, sorry about that. This is all from the same product page. See, this is why I hate Google Translate. It's better than nothing. You know, because I can't read Japanese at all, so it's still better than nothing. But I don't know why it translated these two things in two different dates. So I guess you have a whole month to pre-order her. But do remember that within that month, the pre-orders can close if they run out of all their productions, uh, versions of them. So they only have a set amount, and if they already filled it, it can close early. So if you do want to pick up her, the blue bird version or the pink bird version, do check out your usual suspects like AmiAmi, HobbyLinkJapan1999.co, or you can go to Azo.net uh, in order to pre-order her. Just remember, if you pre-order her or Kurumi from Azo.net, you do have to use third party like uh, shopping service like World Shopping or Baiyi or something like that. Um, let me get a drink of water because my throat is starting to really dry up. But yeah, that's the unfortunate thing with Google Translate. It's not always like roughly the same. Now that brings us into Smart Doll News. Now there really isn't much for Smart Doll News this week. 
Um, and even Danny Chu said it to himself um, in one of his posts. He said, like, you know, February is going to be a really slow week for releases because they're really working hard on working on the uh, haptic feedback for the Gen 5 um, Evolve skeleton, trying to get that dialed in so it's ready for release. And they're working on other projects as well. So he even admitted that, you know, there's not going to be much new releases. So let's go over about the few things that came out that I thought was like really interesting that I wanted to talk about. So the first one is this. So on this one, Danny Chu posted on his website, this lovely lady. And let me see, where was it here? So this is this new uh, prototype blouse that they've been working on. But she's he's also mentioning that this girl is a mixture of two different girls. Now, I couldn't figure out what it was. Apparently, it was Haruka and somebody else. Like, and he was making some kind of joke that, you know, since they're blended, they should be called like Summer Haruka or something like that. You guys know I'm really bad with sculpts, so I didn't really realize that it's like two different um, kind of blended sculpts, I guess you could say. I thought it was just like a different version or a new version of Haruka. So I guess in a way I remembered the sculpt, but honestly he said this two girls and I was like, what's the two girls, man? I only see Haruka. <laughs> so I really didn't know. Um, but the blouse is mainly what he was the kind of advertising in this particular photo here. And it's a really nice blouse. I think it's really cool. I do want one of those at some point. I just don't know when I'll be able to, you know, pick it up because I have to be really frugal with what I spend my money on. As I always say, I'm trying to go to Japan, so I gotta save up. I gotta be diligent, man. I gotta be diligent. And then um, next up, Danny Chu posted this picture. Now, this was a response of the first one because apparently this one is also another blended girl uh, from two different molds. Now, he did say specifically in this post that they currently have 15 head molds in circulation. Now, I didn't even know that there were 15, man. So, okay, listen. G07, Kanata, the Cos1, the COS, G04, M01, Hikari2, Yuri6, Yuri2, Yuri Moto, Hakari Moto, Mirai, uh, V01, G03, G05, and Cheese. I didn't even know there was one that's Cheese. Which one is Cheese, man? Like, there are so many head molds and like, I can't, I can't even like, I can't recognize them. I know there's a lot of you out there in the community that can be like, oh, I know that mold. It's blah, blah, blah. I really can't tell at all. Like, I just try to remember them by the character and, you know, like, you know, Mirai, I know it's Mirai, Kizuna, I know it's Kizuna, but Mirai and Kizuna are from the same head sculpt, which is the Mirai sculpt, which I believe Melody also shares that same sculpt. Um, Chitose is her own sculpt. I believe the only one that shared Chitose sculpt was Gurai, the licensed figure, or um, figure, licensed Figma uh, girl from Frame Arms. Um, and then like, there, like the the Vision Head was V zero one, right? And uh, I can't remember the rest. The Kanata has her head. I think we talked about this last time on Beyond the Doll. Beyond is their own head sculpt. So, but that wasn't mentioned here. But there's so many of them. So basically what he's saying is that they can't keep up production by keeping all these different um, head molds in circulation. So he, what he's trying to do is trying to blend characters together to make, two new, to make a new character and also keep the different varieties down to make it more feasible in order to you know run a lot smoother without having 15 different sculpts and 15 different head molds and paint masks it's taking up logistical space it's just too much so he's trying to like scale things down a little bit um but can you guys tell who this one is so he's saying that the last one was summer and haruka so summertime haruka or hikarimoto but this new one, he's asking if anyone can tell which this one is. And I don't know. He says the current version is a UD6 mold and is moving to the COS mold. But I I have no idea who this character is. I really, I really don't. 
Um, but she is wearing a prototype blouse, which he's asking for any suggestions. Uh, I think I put in his Instagram post a suggestion of the cowgirl. Because uh, it just, it reminds me of something like a cowgirl would wear. Like, you know, some girl down in Texas, like, yeehaw, kind of thing. Like, you would meet in a bar doing some line dancing and stuff like that. <laughs> That's what, like, the blouse kind of reminds me of. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's a cowgirl blouse. It looks like cow. I, I want to call it the cowgirl. It's really nice, though. I do like it. Um, and it looks nice with this ensemble here. Just the shorts and the shirt. Uh, it's definitely cool. It would, t it would totally look cool too with just that and the jeans as well because that's literally what I guess the cowgirls would wear <laughs> like if you go line dancing or whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's my take on that. So next up, this is a prototype picture. At least I believe it's a prototype picture. I mean, look at this. It it's either he just took the picture at a weird way like with it not buttoned together and just hanging but somehow it stayed detached or this is really just legit like a new way that he's doing jeans um it could very well be that there is a a regular uh button here where you can just button it at one way like the normal way or you there's probably maybe another button hidden here where you can make it smaller i'm assuming to have it either low-waisted or high-waisted um i don't know but that's just my thought but then again if you make it low-waisted and high-waisted that would mess up the crotch area here because if it's low-waisted there wouldn't be much room and then if you make it high-waisted there's not enough room uh so yeah maybe that theory doesn't pan out that well but i guess this is just a new design choice that he's going with with the jeans which i mean to be honest it looks it looks different but it also looks cool at the same time because it's different like it's not your regular kind of jean thing like he's going with like an a, a specific kind of aesthetic i think it looks pretty cool like it's difference makes it looks cool I'm just hoping that the belt um, that you put around it still works pretty fine. I'm assuming it does. I'm assuming it does. But I'm just worried about the way the angles these loops are at, just to make sure that, and I'm sure Danny's testing it, just to make sure that the belt doesn't get snagged in a weird way. Now, next up. Oh, so Danny pictured, posted this picture here of a wedding dress. Now, this is not my personal style of wedding dress. I know a lot of you in the comment section thought this was a beautiful dress and it's really nice, but it's not my personal style. I don't really like the, the frilliness of all these like little frillies, but if you like it, great. I don't know if he's making it into production. This is one of those pictures that he just kind of like posted a picture with no context behind it, but it, it is like, a, you know, a finished dress because the doll is wearing it. Think i'm thinking of though me personally what's with this red dress in the back that red dress looks awesome i don't know if you guys can see it on your end very well because it's already small to begin with but if you go to danny's instagram page um or his website you'll see this picture there and you could probably zoom in a little bit better but that red dress actually looks really cool so i'm more curious about what what's up with that one more so than this one and also, I believe that red dress is a regular human-sized dress. And this dress here in the corner also looks like a regular human-sized dress. But then you have the doll here on the counter. You could definitely see the counter. The doll with a dress here. But then on the right side, you can see here there's another doll-sized dress. So where is he right now? Like, I thought he was in a doll, like, I mean, I'm sorry, like a bridal shop and he asked the shop to make a doll dress for him or something or a prototype and they're displaying it here but then i'm also like why is there a small doll dress in hidden in the back over here so i don't know where he's at i don't know what this place is it's obviously not the smart doll store as you can tell from the picture <coughs> but either way i'm curious about this small dress here like what is that and I'm even more curious about this red dress. Can we have that instead? Um, my personal taste, I just think this looks cool. At least the little bit I can see of it. Uh, the frilly stuff is just not my personal taste. But if you like it, this looks like it's a prototype and it may actually get, it may get made at some point. Who knows? And Danny Chu always seems to release like a, a wedding dress version every some odd years or so. So you never know. Could be one of the new ones. Now, also, this is one of the pictures that he's posted on his website, you know, like the day in the life, no context or anything. 
I just thought it was cool because you can see the different, you know, the smart doll pluses here. You can see these dolls here. You can see the new gray courage here. You can see the new hand gauntlets here. And then you see pocket doll again. Pocket doll just keeps creeping up at random places. You just randomly see her appear. But I, what I like about this is you can definitely see the size difference, right? So you have the plus, then you have the regular doll here, and then you could see pocket doll next to the regular doll. It looks like it's just as tall as the bust line of the regular dolls, which is definitely smaller than like, because we were all trying to speculate exactly how tall it is. So if you want to take it in mini Dolphy dream terms, I think that this is still shorter than mini Dolphy dream. Cause I think mini Dolphy dream might be a little bit taller than that. I'd have to look again and put my mini Dolphy Dream up next to my Smart Doll just to make sure. But I think Pocket Doll might be smaller than mini Dolphy Dream. I don't know. I don't. What do you guys think? Put it down in the comment section down below. What do you think about this height comparison between these two dolls? I thought it was just really interesting to see. As we don't see Pocket Doll that often show up in pictures. And even rare, we don't see her like standing next to another doll, so to speak. So next up, okay, so this is an interesting conversation. Danny Chu posted in one of his posts, are you team anime or are you team semi-real? Now, I don't want to go into a huge conversation because if you want, you can watch the whole thing in last week's episode of the Doll Symposium. I did an entire episode about this one individual post about being teams, team anime and team semi-real. And I feel like I made some pretty good arguments. End of the day, TLDR, long story short, I think you should just be like whatever you want to be, whether it's team anime, team semi-real, or team both. Me personally, I'm team both, and I think both are here to stay. So Danny Chu mentioned in his post that just because he's doing more semi-reels than he's doing anime does not mean that anime is disappearing. Anime still will be around, and it will still be uh, you know, part of the Smart Doll lineup. Um, and he has more plans of anime stuff coming out, but he has been working on a lot more semi real than usual. Um, but I'm team both because I think both needs to coexist. And I think both, uh, brings in individuals into the hobby that come from different backgrounds, whether you're, you like anime and then you got into team anime for smart dolls, or if you didn't like anime style dolls and you really like the semi real doll. So you bought into that. And then eventually you've grown to love the anime dolls and bought that. And then most people from anime side will buy the anime dolls and then they, you know, grown to love semi-real and they buy semi-real as well. So I think both of them, you know, are, are here to stay. And I don't think we should really separate each other between team anime or team semi-real. I think one can't live without the other. We should all just be team both. Hashtag team both. But if you want to watch the episode, it was like a really long episode, actually. It was like three and a half hours just talking about team anime and team semi-real. And we had a really good discussion back and forth between me and chat about a lot of different things uh, regarding that. I do want to address one thing. Um, an individual posted in the comment section to correct me on, on a certain topic about um, Dolphy Dream Cosmos and Dolphy Dream Rise from Persona. And I think they had a very valid point about that. And I do agree with them when it comes to Rise. And I don't really agree too much about Cosmos because Cosmos only has like a semi-real nose in my opinion. And the rest of her is kind of team anime-ish. But Rise kind of looks like team semi-real to me. So you definitely write on that uh, for the individual that commented there. I'm not mentioning names because I don't know if they're going to be okay with me mentioning their names and I don't want to out them, but you know, uh, it's just something that I wanted to address because I am honest and I'm real. Like if I make a mistake, call me out on it. And they totally did. And it's totally worth it because I've learned something. So don't be afraid, you know, to be like, you know, whatever, you know, Jesus you know, made a mistake because I'm human. I do it. I make mistakes and making mistakes is really the only way you learn. Um, so yeah, but if you really want to know the real argument, why this is like a whole thing about this Cosmos and Rise thing, 
please watch the Beyond the Doll episode from last week. I thought it was a really good fun time and a really interesting argument that I made for a lot of different points. Whether or not the arguments I made are valid or not is up for you to decide as the viewer. Uh, let me know what you think because that's the whole point of this. Like I say my opinion, you guys say your opinion, and we both learn from each other. And I think that's what makes this hobby grow and what this makes this hobby beautiful is the ability for us to open our hearts and listen to each other and you know talk things out and try to understand each other's point of view which is why i don't think we should be team anime or team semi real we should just be team both and just you know open our hearts for both of them to live and exist uh i really do like personally in my honest opinion i really do like both of them even though i only have mostly anime girls and not really any semi reels except for one but uh, I do like other semi reels. I'm just, you know, trying to bide my time, uh, you know, when I'm purchasing things because obviously nowadays I'm trying to save money to go to Japan. Maybe my next semi reel will be when I go to Japan. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, I, I talked about it enough right now. But really, please go see the last episode of Beyond the Doll. I thought it was a really great conversation with chat that we had. So it was really cool. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is these pictures that he posted of the new Evolve. Um, I don't know if this is the new Gen 5 that he's working on or whatever generation, but I can definitely see some things that are different from the original postings that we saw, like this three point ball joint here. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the original Gen 1 didn't look exactly like this. Uh, I do remember this looking like that. Um, the feet, I did not know that the feet look different on different sides. So I thought that the ball joint would look like this on both sides, but really on the other side, it looks more like you don't see the cutout here. It's like more fresh or, or whatever you say, like more smooth, which means that this is one piece over here and the ball joint, half of it connects to that piece, um, which I thought was pretty interesting because I'm trying to figure out if that's really the case because then how does the foot pivot? So if you figure the way though the ball joint is now, let's say that my hand is the ball joint, right? And this is the floor. You can actually pivot it where the, you know, the ankle goes this or that. But if one side of the ball joint is flat, which it kind of looks like here, and I'm only speculating, I don't know for sure. I'm just speculating from the picture. If it's straight, that means that it won't be able to move like this because one side of it is straight. It's not a ball joint, right? Uh, so it looks like it can only move like if this was the foot, like, you know, like forward and back, not side to side. But again, I could be wrong. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just talking about what I can see here. And that's what it kind of looks like to me. But again, I, I could be totally wrong. It could be, it could move in all different directions, just like our smart dolls do now. But I, I just don't, I just don't know. Like, I just don't know. I'm just making guesses from what I see. Now there's other parts in this that I thought was really interesting that you can't see from this photo. So let's go to a closer photo. So in here, you can actually see in the hip joints, you can see like the little grip pieces for the haptic feedback system. But the thing I thought was really interesting was the pegs. So normally these pegs are smoothed down, but you can see in here all the little teeth um, for the haptic feedback. So when I guess when you move or twist the joints, it'll actually not only in the wrist joints click, but also in like, you know, the wrist part that goes into the forearm. When you move the wrist like this from side to side, you're probably going to hear it click. That I thought was really interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I thought the clicks were going to be just like this in all the ball joints is where the clicks I thought were going to be. But apparently it looks like the little piece that goes. So this is the shin, right? And this is the foot. This is the piece that goes into here, I'm assuming, like right into here. So it looks like it's going to click as you move, you know, the, the, the foot joint around. So I thought that was really interesting. Another thing I thought was interesting uh, from this picture is right here on the spine. If you can see it, if you can't see it on my picture, go to Danny Chu's website. You can find the picture there, but you can see at the ball joints in the spine, because this is the spine part, right? The ball joints has little tiny grips of teeth in it too. So when you move these ball joints, they're supposed to click as well. So, the, so basically what that is, if it's in the spine, right? Those ball joints 
uh, they don't move if you move the character front and back. Like you could see the 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 lines are vertical in this in this picture right here. The lines are vertical going up and down. So if you move the character up and down, it's not going to click. So because they're vertical, what I think is when you move the torso and you move the bust like this, that's when it starts making the like click noises or the haptic feedback is when you move the torso. That's my assumption. Obviously, I'm just looking at pictures. I haven't touched it or held it or anything like I have no idea. I've never played with it. These are just assumptions I'm making from what I can see in the picture. You can also see from the neck joint here. You can see it also they're they're ribbed. So they're all vertical lines. So I'm assuming that moving the head front and back um, will not, you know, or even side to side like this, like side to side like this, it's not going to click, I don't think, because you're still moving it up and down that ball joint or front and back up and down that ball joint. It's only if I'm assuming if you're moving the head around like this, like if you're going like this, you'll hear the clicks. And if you move the head just like this, I don't even think you'll hear the clicks because, you know, it's just rotating on the head peg from the head. You're not really rotating the neck. So I'm thinking you'll just feel the haptic feedback when you move the neck in like a rotational thing around like this. That's my assumption. I don't really know. Again, I haven't played with this. You know, I don't have a physical one that I can play with. I'm just speculating from what I can see in the pictures. That's all. So take it for what you will. I want to get your guys take on this. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of these like rib joints that we can see in these pictures? Um, definitely different um, than what we saw in the very first Evolve frame that he mentioned. And I didn't even know we're up to Evolve Gen 5. I thought we were at Gen 3. So he's making some progress, making a lot of tweaks. And again, it's called the Evolve for a reason. It's going to keep evolving. <laughs> but that's really it. That's everything for today's episode of the Doll Symposium. So we don't have a entry for the community shout out. But if you would like to participate in the community shout out, send me an email at dlwshizusan at gmail.com. You can put a bunch of pictures in there that you would like to share with the community. If you'd like to send a message that I can read out to the community, do so as well. You're free to do so. Um, just make sure that in that email, you just specify what is okay for me to talk about on, 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 the, on the video and what is what you want me to keep confidential and private. I don't want to accidentally say something that I shouldn't, um, you know, and, and, you know, out like out your information or whatever that was supposed to be private uh if you don't specify i'm just going to be on the safe side and assume you don't want me to say anything that's in the email and just show the pictures okay make sure the pictures are you know somewhat pg friendly i just don't want it super lewd you can be artistically um you know uh posed uh if you what's the best way to say it like artistically risque so to speak uh, but nothing like super lewd. Like, uh, I'll just ask you to resubmit different pictures. Um, and I believe that's it. Oh, and also, you know, if you want me to advertise where to find you, like whether you have like a shop, a website, and uh, Instagram, social media, whatever, I will, you know, plug that in in the episode as well. Just make sure you let me know if that's what you want me to do. Um, but that's it. That really wraps up everything for this episode this is the end of episode 40 of the doll symposium i'm going to bring my little friend out here my little scotty yay she's such a cutie I'm, I'm i want to take her out of this dress and put her in something else but i really don't know what else to put her in and she looks so awesome in this outfit anyways <laughs> she looks pretty badass and i have like you know a stain prevention suit underneath so so hopefully none of this black is gonna stain um but yeah, that ends up today's episode. This is the end of episode 40 of the Doll Symposium. As always, I am your host, Shizu-san, and my lovely assistant, the beautiful Scotty. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Bye. to get by.